what is type two diabetes and how does the disease pathogenesis begin? Yeah. Great. You know, that's the place to start because it's amazing how many people kind of have sort of the wrong end of the stick on this and, and understandably so, but diabetes really means there's too much sugar in your blood and the sugar is glucose and sugar is not a bad thing. Sugar is actually a really, really good thing. Glucose goes to your brain and it, allows you to think and, and do all the things that your brain needs to do. Um, it goes to your muscles. It allows you to move. And if you don't have any glucose in your blood, you're in huge trouble. So the problem in, in diabetes is just there's too much glucose in the blood, which means it's not going to where it, where it ought to be going. It's not getting into your muscles and into your liver, into your, you know, into the other parts of the body. So, so that's diabetes. And, and the most common one is type two, uh, which starts, not by eating bread or sugar or potatoes or the usual things that people think of, but it's really it starts with something else. It starts with little particles of fat, which may sound strange, but fat in foods that we eat, gets into our blood and it goes into our muscle cells. And these little, these are just microscopic fat particles. When they're inside the cell and they're building up inside the cell, now insulin can't do its job. Insulin is this key made in your pancreas that goes to the muscle cell and it opens up that muscle cell membrane until it's a sugar inside. But if there are these little particles of fat building up, you can think about these, each muscle cell is being jammed up with, with fat, just like a front door lock might be jammed with chewing gum. Your key just isn't going to work anymore. That's the problem with type two diabetes. So it starts with insulin resistance. The insulin resistance comes not from bread or sugar. It comes from fat in animal products, animal fat, but also even um, uh, vegetable fats can do the same kind of thing. Okay. This is actually uh, very different than what most people experience when they go onto the internet. Because as you probably know, you go on YouTube, you go on Instagram, you go on Google and you try and figure out, well, what causes prediabetes and what causes type two diabetes. And the first thing that you'll see is that it says it's sugar. The second thing you'll see is that uh, it's carbs. And so a lot of people are like, oh, okay, carbs aren't good for me. I'm going to go to a low carb diet. I'm going to try and restrict my carb intake. And before you know it, this uh, it becomes very confusing because there's words like carb, sugar, blood sugar, refined sugar, uh, carbohydrate, and people kind of, I think, have a sort of right. slightly confusing picture of it all. So could you kind of spell it out for us and just give us answers to simple questions like, what is sugar? What is blood sugar? And how do scientists know that type 2 diabetes isn't actually caused by carbs, if you will, or a carbohydrate-rich okay. diet? Great question. Sugar is a really simple molecule. Glucose is a tiny little molecule that is, it's fuel. It's sort of like um, gasoline for your brain. I mean, it goes in there and your body can use it to turn on the engine. And and, and glucose is, is the favorite fuel for your brain, for your muscles, for your body in general. And carbohydrate is just a fancy word for a whole lot of sugar molecules all combined together in a chain so that it gets into your body, your body can snip the chain apart and it's, it's really usable fuel. So carbohydrate is your body's favorite kind of stored form of fuel. And carbohydrate is in bread and potatoes and, and beans and pasta and, and all kinds of starchy foods. And your digestive tract has little enzymes that are like scissors snipping that carbohydrate molecule into individual sugars that go in and make your cells happy because they've suddenly got the fuel they need. Um, but people have said, well, but sugar, I think that causes diabetes because when I eat sugar, my blood sugar goes up. Okay. It's easy to understand why people are kind of making this mistake. When they eat sugar, if they've got diabetes, their blood sugar does rise, but that doesn't mean the sugar caused the condition. Imagine if your cells are jammed with fat and they can't accept sugar anymore. And the problem is, is the fat. But now anything that you eat that has sugar in it is going to make your blood sugar rise because it can't go into the cells where it's supposed to go. But the sugar didn't cause it. Now, now Cyrus, don't get me wrong. I'm not suggesting that sodas and other sugary foods are somehow health food. They're not. I mean, even if your soda has a medical degree like Dr. Pepper, it's still not healthy food. But it did not. It did not cause your diabetes. That was a good one. Yeah. The, uh, the, 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 the diabetes. And, and by the way, this has been really confusing because you can see that people who have um, a lot of sodas in their routine, they're at a higher risk of developing diabetes too. But then researchers found 
the evidence is that it's not really the soda. It's the cheeseburger that you bought with the soda or the fried chicken bucket that came with that soda. So the soda was along for the ride. It's all the fat in the burger, the cheese topping, the, the fried chicken. The fat gets into your muscle cells. And that causes the insulin resistance. Now, researchers have, have figured this out in a couple of ways. Number one, um, we've brought in individuals and actually increased their carbohydrate intake to a very substantial degree while reducing their fat intake. Their diabetes gets dramatically better. It, it will sometimes even go away. So in other words, the carbs aren't the cause. The other thing we can do is we can get really fancy. And our colleagues at Yale University and others have done this. We have a machine. Uh, it's, it's like an MRI machine if you ever had a twisted ankle or whatever, uh, magnetic resonance imaging. Through magnetic resonance spectroscopy, it's a big round magnetic donut. And you lie on a table that slides into the middle of this donut. And we can actually look into your muscles. And we can actually measure the fat buildup that, that has happened. And we can track it over time. And we can see it getting worse because I'm eating pizza with all that cheese fat on it, or I'm eating fried chicken. You can see that fat building up over time. And you can see your insulin resistance getting worse as the fat builds up. Then I can say, stop. Let me take those foods away. Let me substitute with foods that are really healthy, but don't have a lot of fat. Beans, vegetables, fruits, whole grains. And, and you're, you're eating these things and you're having fruit. I know you love fruit. You might be having mangoes and papayas and all these things that, that have natural sugars. But what we see is our blood sugars are going down. I look into your body with magnetic resonance spectroscopy. The fat is coming out of your cells because you're not eating much fat anymore. It's coming out. It's dissipating. And your insulin resistance is going away along with that fat. So I know this is a new way of thinking, but the issue for diabetes, diabetes is over the years, we've just been eating fatty stuff. The fat particles have gotten into our muscle cells and they've caused our insulin to not function anymore. But you've still got some insulin if you've got type two. So to make it work again, I got to get the fat out of the diet and that pulls it out of the cells. And there's only two sources of fat, animal products and vegetable oils. And we look around, find out where they are. We do a bit of a search and destroy. And what you will find is this does not take long. In just a matter of days, you see the insulin resistance starting to go away, which is the coolest thing in the world. I, I would agree with you. I, I've read a lot of these studies myself. And uh, the fact that you can make significant changes in insulin resistance in a very short period of time, is just mind boggling because you, just like you mentioned, you know, it, it can accumulate over the course of time and it can take months, years to develop, but you can start to see some pretty dramatic changes within a short period of time, simply by reducing your fat intake and eating more whole carbohydrate, like you had mentioned earlier.